Hi everyone, Logan here again. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, this will probably be a bit of a shorter video, in theory, unless I talk too much. Um, I haven't had a lot of opportunity to sort of record um, what I've been doing with regards to the latest target I've been imaging because the weather's been pretty crappy, um, but it is winter, so it's to be expected. Uh, so I've really only been able to grab sort of half an hour here, half an hour there to try and um, put enough data together for um, my latest image, which um, is actually, I've decided to image a dark nebula. And I've always liked the look of, of the images I've seen of these dark nebulae with all the sort of very brown dust floating through space. And I thought, mm, it's time to really have a, a good crack at one of these. Um, but I wasn't entirely sure whether doing it from my backyard would be a good idea, being in a ball five or six. Um, so the sky, should I be doing it somewhere darker, like ball two or three or whatever, but you know, I thought, what the heck, you know, give it a go. So um, I managed to get um, just over six hours, in fact six hours, 21 minutes of LRGB um, around the time when the moon wasn't actually about, or it was around a new moon. Um, unfortunately when it came to the blue filter, I only got about 45 minutes because that's when the moon did uh, turn up to um, spoil the party. But um, anyway, uh, the target is the uh, Corona Australis Macular Complex, uh, or the area is also known as the Anteater Nebula. So um, we'll just move into um, Celeria and have a look and uh, where it's uh, situated in the sky. Okay, I've got uh, Celerium up and running. Um, so looking east, here's the Milky Way um, rising up here around the Milky Way core. And the area that I'm interested in, if I turn on a couple of things here, is Corona Australis, otherwise known as the Southern Crown. You can see the constellation here. And specifically within this constellation, I was imaging the uh, Corona Australis molecular cloud, which is a, a big dark nebula um, that also is known as the Anteater Nebula. And if we just take a few of these things off and just zoom in a bit closer, in here, and this is the area here. So this is the, the Anteater, um, these are the eyes, uh, the snout goes down um, in this area here and the bodies over here. Um, this is what I, my field of view that I um, have. So this is using the Skywatcher Esprit 120 and the ASI 2600 MM Pro. So that was um, my field of view. So this is one of the closest star forming areas to our solar system. It's about 430 uh, light years away. And um, there's also a, a globular cluster over here. I just can't remember the NGC number at the moment, but I'll, I'll put it up on the screen somewhere. Uh, so yeah, that's that's where I was imaging. Didn't quite get as much in the blue filter as I, I would like, only 45 minutes. Uh, the whole integration was, as I said earlier, six hours and I think 17 minutes or something like that. So we'll pop over to Pixon's site and um, have a look at uh, some of the the subs and the stacked images. Okay, we're in Pixon's site here, and I'll uh, just bring up a few um, files. So this was a single five minute sub. This was a luminance, and you know when you're imaging these these dark nebula, they look a bit um, disappointing. They're not like the re the emission nebula where you see, you know, nice structure and and, and parts of the cloud that looks like just a sort of a dark smudge really um, and then we got the areas here these are this is the area there's the blue reflection um, component of the Anteater nebula which is the sort of eyes the globular cluster shows up quite nicely um, but if we stack the luminance uh, over here we start to get a lot more detail and we start to see actually I'll just zoom out here you start to see the the dust cloud more defined and some more features showing up in here this little sort of snail type structure in here um, and the globular cluster looks quite nice um, this was what the red looked like 
this was the green here, a little bit more smudgy, but not too too different. And this was the blue. And as I said, I would have liked to have got a bit more on the blue, but the moon sort of came in to spoil the show. Um, and only got 45 minutes. But there's there's still some nice detail, I think, in the final image of the um, reflection nebula part. Um, now, I found this quite tricky to process because uh, I hadn't really done a, a proper process of a dark nebula. And, and my first go here, I was actually quite pleased with the way the actual um, uh, nebula, the dark nebula came out. I got the nice sort of brown dusty look. I got the blue reflection nebula. If I get in here, you can see um, more of the detail in here, the differences in the colours. And the star colours weren't too bad, but what I didn't like, and if we just zoom in a bit closer here, the stars, this just looked really messy. Um, there was all this sort of variation in the background. There was uh, the sort of black areas. There was this sort of glow between the stars. It just looked, um, it just looked awful. So um, I went ahead and I processed it again. And this time I was a lot happier with what I got with regards to the stars, a bit more definition. Yes, there's a bit of noise in there, but you don't want to necessarily get rid of all the noise completely. There wasn't that sort of smudgy colour joining up the stars. You know how the stars more defined um, with uh, back from background space. But the nebula um, part looked quite disappointing and a bit featureless. So what I ended up doing um, and going into Photoshop was I um, combined these two and I basically used the uh, nebula part of this um, processing um, that was done and then I used the background stars of this processing and uh, end up with the final image that looks um, like this. Oh, just one more thing before I show you the, the final image. I just want to say thank you very much to everybody who has checked out um, the videos, who have left comments. I mean, feel free to please leave a comment um, whether you liked something, didn't like something, or particularly if I got something wrong because I am not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, um, just uh, learning like everybody else. Uh, thank you very much to all those who have subscribed and to anybody else who is watching if you want to uh, if you're enjoying the videos, um, please feel free to hit the subscribe um, button. Um, I, as I said, really enjoy making the videos. It certainly gives you something to do on those um, rainy days when you uh, when you can't do astrophotography. So, um, yeah, just wanted to say thank you very much.